Hey friends, welcome back to Genomics with Georgia. I'm Georgia, I'm a genomic data scientist, and today I'm gonna to be spilling the tea on how I actually went from being a wet lab biologist with zero coding experience to being somebody who codes. How did I actually learn to code? Stay tuned on today's video. So guys, welcome back to Genomics with Georgia. Remember, if you wanna see some more content about genomics, how do you get into here, hit that subscribe button, give me a like if you're enjoying the content and let's crack on with today's video. So my name is Georgia, Genomics with Georgia, and I'm a genomic data scientist living and working in Cambridge, UK. I keep telling you on the internet that I taught myself how to code. But that sounds easier said than done, and I don't want to underplay how difficult that actually was. So today's video is going to be a brutally honest tale of how I went from zero coding experience. As in, like, I didn't even know what coding meant. <laughs> like, I just, I didn't, I did not know. Um, I'm going to do some more videos on how I got better at coding, but today's video is about how I got to enough proficiency to be able to do a coding project. Get yourselves ready. I am I need a drink <laughs> to get through this brutally honest account of how I learned to code. <laughs> My favorite place ever. <laughs> And I'm ready to spill the tea. Uh, I hope not my actual tea, but I'm ready to go. Okay, so how did I begin? Well, take yourselves back in time before the pandemic. It's the summer of 2019. What a sweet, sweet time that was. Um, and I applied for an internship at the Earlham Institute really cool genomics place on the Norwich Research Park. I thought, oh, do you know what? I would like to do some science and get paid for it. Applied for this internship, nailed the interview on a soft skill level, but then they said, hey, Georgia, do you know how to code? Uh, and I was like, no, secretly, what even is that? Don't understand. Yeah, obviously they rejected me, which was, yeah, totally fair enough. Um, and I asked for some feedback and it was the first time that I'd ever been given such concrete feedback as to why I didn't get something. So I was like, okay, seems like this coding thing could be a barrier in my scientific life. So should we, let's have a go, let's have a go. So from that moment, I decided I was gonna learn to code that summer instead of doing this internship. But then I was like, well, how? What even, bleh, where, what, what do I even need to learn? I like, I literally was so clueless and like I said, we're spilling the honest tea here because I think transparency is very important. I was working in a bar. A guy came into the bar who I'd matched with on a dating app. I brought up the fact that I was going to learn to code this summer. Um, and he was like, oh, well, I'm a data scientist. And I was like, okay, sounds pretty boring. Um, more on this later, as in data science isn't boring. We're gonna break down that stereotype in this channel. But anyway, and he told me that all of his friends who work in coding jobs all started learning how to code using Code Academy. So one of the most stressful things I found when I decided I was gonna learn to code but I hadn't started yet was looking online at all of these platforms. And I was like, how do you know which one is the best one how do you know which one's good which one's relevant um but yeah this guy said that his data friends learn on code academy so i thought well hey none of my inner circle or even outer circle are coding i had nobody to go and ask this this question to i then spent that summer on code academy python is the best language to learn first and if you look at job descriptions to be fair it's the most in demand language it's the easiest to learn so i did a learn python course on code academy i'm gonna link everything in the description that i mentioned in this video i did this learn python course on code academy and I'm not gonna lie guys, that first time you go and try and code, you have to learn to think like a computer and 
learning that computers have no intuition was genuinely one of the hardest things because <laughs> when you communicate with somebody they can pick up on the gaps that you don't tell them whereas a computer only does what you tell it to do and you have to learn to speak really simply to the computer and doing that was so hard adjusting the way that you have to think and communicate it was yeah it was bizarre but anyway um i digress so i did this learn code academy learn python code academy course and then the summer was kind of coming to an end and this was when i did something awesome there was an email that went round to all of the students in biology at UEA, undergrads and postgrads, saying that there was a man who had written this software called Slim, which was a genetic simulation software. And he was traveling around Europe, showing people how to use, how to use his software. Sorry, my cat is just doing something ridiculous. <laughs> oh my God. Um, showing people how to use his software for free but obviously it was computational coding software but i thought hey i've i've spent a few hours on code academy learning a bit of python you know what what, what is this thing so i signed up to the course and it was a week long and it was just the first time that i i felt like i was in the community right i'm i'm at this this software workshop on genomics it's free it's hosted at my uni <laughs> I'm surrounded by postdocs and PhD students doing stuff on genomics. And I was like, hold on, there's a theme here. Everyone in genomics research is kind of doing this coding stuff. And I just, at that point, I didn't know how prominent it was after undergraduate level. But yeah, so I did this free course and filling the tea. <laughs> spilling the tea um i died like i actually died it must have got to like day three and i was so so lost i i was way over my head the most important thing about going to this software workshop i went to was the exposure so even though i was lost i was still you know at a computer trying to use a genetic simulation software working in a language i've never like even seen or heard of before surrounded by all these people that use coding every day in their genomics research we all went to the pub at the end of it i was talking to all these people and it was yeah the first time i felt a part of well i don't know what uh, it was the first time i felt part of this computational genomics community so that was the second thing i did i i barely could i didn't complete the course i couldn't run my own simulation but i'd done something and i'd exposed myself and i'd met people in the industry so now i've done a learn python course i've basically drowned at a, at a genomic simulation software workshop what's next i now head into my final year and they send out a list of research supervisors for our final year undergraduate thesis and whose name was on the list the guy that rejected me that summer so i was like oh my god i'm back and i'm better i've done a bit of python i've died at this genetic simulation thing i could do this now i'm rocked up in my heel boots and my fur coat because obviously it's a bit colder at this time of year and i was like I'm back, I'm better, I'm gonna be in this lab now, I'm gonna be in a bioinformatics lab and I'm gonna nail this, I'm gonna smash down these barriers that were put up in front of me. So I go into the lab and I sit down with the supervisor and I told him everything I'd learned over the summer after his feedback and then he was like, oh, well, you know, what have you been learning? And I was like, oh, you know, I've learned some Python, I went on the Slim workshop and he said, well, from my perspective, you want to learn R and you want to learn some command line. So first of all, I thought, oh, <laughs> I've been learning Python and my supervisor wants me to know R and the command line. So I then went away and I did a learn R course on Code Academy, my love. By the way, Code Academy do not sponsor me. However, Code Academy, if you are out there watching this content, I could definitely be interested in some, some little collaborations, but 
whatever. Let's just recap. We've done a Learn Python course. I then went on a Slim Software workshop. I then did Learn R and Learn the Command Line. And then the final thing I did before starting my bio Blah, blah, blah. The final thing I did before starting my bioinformatics research project was super random it sounds but stick with me here I did a web development course so my university sent out an email saying code first girls which linking below I now volunteer with them I love them so much um code first girls are running a free eight week long workshop on how to go from no web development coding skills to building your own website. All you had to do was apply, say why you were interested and go on this course for free. So I took an eight week long, I think it was eight weeks. Yeah, it was eight weeks. I took an eight week long course on learning to build a website. And I didn't need to learn HTML or JavaScript. I didn't even want to build a website to be honest but I did want to increase my exposure to technology and coding in general, because like I touched on at the beginning of the video, one of the hardest things about learning to code is understanding the mindset of how to talk to a computer. So even though there's certain languages that will be more prominent in your field and your work, I think when you're first starting out, any exposure is good exposure and especially if you can find it when it's free like i did code first girls this awesome organization where the code first girls team build the content and then people volunteer and it doesn't have to be a girl it's any anybody volunteers anyone volunteers to then teach these courses to young girls and non-binary people who are wanting to either switch careers or they're at uni and they've never coded before by the time i rocked up in january 2020 to start this bioinformatics research project i'd Learn Python, and I say learn, I'd started to learn the fundamentals of Python. I was no means a Python Easter at this point. And I'd learned a bit of Python, I'd drowned on a software workshop, I'd learn R and learn the command line, again, fundamentals, by no means a pro. And then I'd been on a web development course. So I rock up in the January like, hey, seven months ago, I didn't even know what this field was. And now I kind of dabbled in so many little areas that Come at me by mathematics, I can take this on. So that's my honest journey about how I got from zero coding experience to be ready for that first bioinformatics project. So in some more videos, we'll touch on how you get better, how you increase that proficiency. But when we're going from zero to something, these were my steps that I made along the way. And I just wanna reiterate when we're gonna wrap up this video now. When I did that Learn Python course originally on Code Academy, I must have had to spend hours and hours and hours of my life staring at something that was so simple. And for the life of me, it just made no sense. It was just gobbledygook. I was just so, so lost. And when I did the Slim Software Workshop, like I said, day three, I drowned. I was so lost. I still had no idea what was going on. Everyone else around me was cracking on and I'm staring at this computer like, I I want to just cry right now. And then when I did the Learn R, here's some spilling the tea on his truth. I never finished the R course. I just did half of it. But it was enough for me to be able to then understand a bit of the syntax. And then when I did the HTML JavaScript building a website course with Code First Girls, however, my website looked crap it was so bad but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how good or bad you are at the start all that matters is that you're starting so like i said in my first well one of my first videos on this channel the best thing you can do is start as early as possible that's the take home message from this just do something do anything and start increasing your exposure into this field <laughs> So guys, there you have it. This is Georgia from Genomics with Georgia spilling the honest tea about how I got from zero to able to do my first bioinformatics project. I hope you've appreciated the honesty here today. Um, like I said, I want this channel to be super transparent. I'm gonna be really honest with you guys because I want you to know that 
it's not always plain sailing so I think it's really important to share with you guys because I didn't just pick up a laptop and suddenly be a massive coding whiz like that didn't happen so if you've enjoyed this content today you know what to do hit that subscribe button give this video a little like follow me on Instagram and comment down below if you found this helpful if you've related to anything or if you want to know anything else about things I've mentioned today just let me know down below thank you so much and I can't wait to see you next time on another installment of genomics with Georgia